Dear students, the topic is photoperiodism. The flowering response of plants to the relative durations of day and night time is called photoperiodism. A day length or you know daily duration of light is referred to as photoperiod or critical duration. Critical day duration means continuous 12 hours of day length. Critical dark duration means continuous 12 hours of darkness. According to photoperiodic responses, flowering plants are of three types. They are short day plants or SDP, long day plants or LDP and day neutral plants or DNP. We can see about short day plants. The plants which flower when the photoperiod or critical duration becomes shorter than critical day duration are called short day plants. These plants need long night and shorter day. They are also called long night plants. Example are Cosmos, Chrysanthemum, Rice, Maryland Mammoth variety of tobacco, sugarcane and potato. In short day plants, the dark period is critical and must be continuous. If this dark period is interrupted with a brief exposure of red light, that is 660 to 665 nanometer wavelength, the short day plant will not flower. Maximum inhibition of flowering with red light occurs at about the middle of critical dark period. However, the inhibitory effect of red light can be overcome by a subsequent exposure with far red light. 730 to 735 nanometer wavelength. Interruption of light period with red light does not have inhibitory effect on flowering in short day plant. Prolongation of the continuous dark period initiate early flowering. The plants which flower when the photo period or critical duration becomes greater than the critical day duration are called long day plants. These plants need short night and long day. They are also called short night plants. Example, wheat, lettuce, cabbage, radish, etc. Long day plants require longer daylight period, usually 14 to 16 hours in a 24 hour cycle for subsequent flowering. These plants are also called as short night plants. Wheat, radish, cabbage, sugar beet and spinach are example. In long day plant, light period is critical. A brief exposure of red light in the dark period or the prolongation of light period stimulate flowering in long day plants. Next is day neutral plants. Flowering of these plants are not affected by photo period. These plants flower after a period of vegetative growth. Example, cucumber, sunflower, tomato, corn, chili, pea and cotton. The site of perception of light or dark duration are the leaves. A hormonal substance is responsible for inducing flowering. Day neutral plants flower in all photo period ranging from 5 hours to 24 hours continuous exposure. During recent years, intermediate categories of plants such as long short day plants and short long day plants have also been recognized. Long short day plants Long short day plants are short day plant but must be exposed to long days during early periods of growth for subsequent flowering. Example is bryophyllum. Short long day plants are long day plant but must be exposed to short day during early period of growth for subsequent flowering. Example certain varieties of wheat and rye. Here shows the differences between short day and long day plants. Next we can see about phytochromes. It is observed that a brief exposure with red light during critical dark period inhibit flowering in a short day plant and this inhibitory effect can be reversed by a subsequent exposure with far red light. Similarly, prolongation of critical light period or the interruption of dark period stimulate flowering in long day plants. This inhibition of Flowering in short day plant and simulation of flowering in long day plant involves the operation of proteinaceous pigment called phytochrome. It is present in the plasma membrane of cells and it has two components, chromophore and protein. 
Phytochrome is present in roots, coleoptiles, stems, hypocotyle, cotyledons, petioles, leaf blades, vegetative buds, flower tissues, seeds and developing fruits of higher plants. The pigment phytochrome exists in two different forms that is red light absorbing form which is designated as PR and far red light absorbing form which is designated as PFR. These two forms of the pigment are photochemically interconvertible. When PR form of the pigment absorbs red light, it is converted into PFR form. When PFR form of the pigment absorbs far red light, it is converted into PR form. The PFR form of pigment gradually changes into PR form in dark. It is considered that during daytime, the PFR form the pigment is accumulated in plant which are incubatory to flowering in short day plant but is stimulatory in long day plants. During critical dark period in short day plants, this form gradually changes to PR form resulting in flowering. A brief exposure with red light will convert this form again into PFR form thus inhibiting flowering. Reversal of inhibitory effect of red light during critical dark period in short day plants by subsequent far red light exposure is because the PFR form after absorbing far red light, you know, the wavelength is 730 to 354 nanometer will again be converted back into PR form. Prolongation of critical light period or the interruption of the dark period by red light in long day plant will result in further accumulation of the PFR form in the pigment, thus stimulating flowering in long day plants. Next we can see the differences between PR and PFR forms of phytochromes. Here is the differences between PR and PFR forms of phytochrome. Here shows the cycle of phytochrome in leaves of plants. In long day plant, when days are long and lights are short, not all of the plants PFR is converted back to PR during the night. The high amount of PFR that remain triggers the flowering process in long day plants. In short day plants, when days are short and nights are long, much of the PFR in a plant is converted back into PR. The low level of PFR triggers the flowering process in short day plants. This is the overall summary of PFR buildup and PR buildup. That means interconversion of PFR and PR which triggers florigen activation in long day plant as well as florigen activation in short day plants. Next we can see the significance of photoperiodism. Photoperiodism is an example of physiological preconditioning. The stimulus is given at one time and the response is observed after months. Exposure to long photoperiod hastens flowering. Example in V the earring is hastened. During long night exposure PR form is converted into PFR form and flowering is initiated. If dark period is greater, PFR is converted into PR form that inhibits flowering. The important phytochrome mediated photoresponses in plants include photoperiodism, seed germination, sex expression, bud dormancy, rhizome formation, leaf abscission, epinasty, flower induction, protein synthesis, pigment synthesis, auxin catabolism, respiration and stomatal. I hope you could understand what is photoperiodism and its significance. Dear friends, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe my channel.